Okay, we are live. We are live from uh, San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so it's a good time. Um, I was trying to find the way to switch cameras. It looks like I will just have to stick with the one camera this evening, but that's okay uh, because really we'll be focused on the terrain. So I mean that's what's that's what's important here, right? Um, the I'm very excited to. Uh, to do this with you guys, I normally am left to my own devices, uh, manufacturing encounters with all of the tools that I've been given by, by Wizards of the Coast, an amazing company full of spectacular magicians, wizards. Uh, they're uh, just amazing people at what they do. Uh, so if I keep looking this way and you're forced to look at my scar and uh, unshorn face, then uh, don't take it personally. I'm not looking away. I'm looking to see if there's any comments. So um, if you uh, do have any questions or anything while we're going through this, or if you have any recommendations or setups, um, even better, we'll, we'll go with what we have and, uh, we will create this encounter together. So, uh, a quick synopsis, if that can be done for, you know, my, my weekly game, we've been playing for, uh, several months now. And, um, I, I always make it a point to start a new campaign with a new group of people who I, who I come in contact with, because really all you need to do is say, hey guys, I'm a dungeon master to everybody you meet. And pretty soon you'll have more than what you can possibly handle at the table. <laughs> so I have uh, five players, hold on, a vendor, ribbon, various, Malray, and Linux, who else? I'm missing someone. Oh, Alona. So I have six players at the table, and uh, they are all around level five adventures in Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, and they recently just came into a town. And at the conclusion of last week's session, they uh, came across a plot that they have been trying to unfold. Uh, they're there were some assassins that they caught and the assassin um, told them that they were hired to take out the leaders of this one country and um, their efforts were thwarted thanks to the craftiness of the adventurers. But uh, the, the assassin, when they were deciding whether or not they should interrogate him, uh, let out the information that the only reason why they agreed to do this job with the drow who hired them is because the drow had taken the children from their village. So they're heading east into the continent of Karatur in, uh, in the Forgotten Realms world, because I love Forgotten Realms. Uh, and they are trying to not only find any information about this drow unfolding, but also trying to find where uh, the children are possibly being kept so that they can save them and bring them to safety. So with that information, they showed up to a city while they were traveling east from Rashomon. <laughs> Very fancy place. Um, they showed up to the city of Almorel, which is next to the Lake of Mists. And uh, all of this information is not necessary for you to know. It's just good for my brain to go through it because of the geography and everything that's around there. So the region has a large lake. They are the central trading hub to these, the endless wastes where the Tiguan, uh, their bunch of crazy marauding bands um, that group together occasionally to try and destroy everybody. Um, they are all out in that area and they leave this one settlement alone because it's kind of a central hub for trade and everything. So it's a kind of, a, it's a, has about 9,000 people in the city. And um, there's a lot of caravaneers who uh, stop through. Uh, so the last week's session, they just showed up to the city. They went and uh, I, I concocted a scenario where one of the characters could 
leave his old character behind and be, and try out his new character because he was playing a barbarian. He's like, I don't really like the barbarian. I kind of want to play an artificer. I was like, okay, I like to say yes as a dungeon master, so I'll I'll try that. Um, so he uh, was introduced. His new character, his name is Linux. It's kind of funny. Uh, he um, has created a really old school, like if you can imagine like a city of Ember, kind of like a steampunk version of, of, a, of a video of a movie theater. And all it is, is just like, it's a, um, a, a pianola. So those pianos that play the tune when you just like take that block of pins and then put it in there and it spins and while it spins, it hits the different notes. So it plays the music and it's kind of honky tonk sounding. It's kind of funny. So they go in there and they're like, I've never seen an establishment like this. And there on the wall, they're like, Shh, the, the show's about to start. The great wizard Eisenheim is going. So he has this stage name and everything. Really funny. So anyways, that's all going on. And then during the intermission uh, from the, the theater, they had, they had a bathroom break and um, the guests were all going and, and doing their thing. Most were just sitting at the tables. Uh, but while they were doing that, um, one of them rolled a really high perception check and noticed a drow individual off in the distance, uh, make some kind of an exchange with a rich looking nobleman. And uh, they both uh, headed down the hall. So they investigated, they found uh, the room that they were in. And while they were outside, they were all arguing very loudly about how they should go in there. So I made a couple of rolls and they and the people inside the room heard what was going on and knew that people were trying to break in. So they escaped out the window, a chase ensued, they caught up to them. And the uh, the uh, people who were trying to flee through this crowded city in the in the evening uh, made it all the way to the dock at the Lake of Mists, where there was a vessel parked in the uh, parked docked. That's the term for boats uh, at the port, and um, they the person was trying to get onto the vessel and leave but the heroes showed up started dealing a bunch of damage um the wizard casted suggestion on a couple of key bad guys and that kind of took them out of the fight um and then in the middle of that fight the uh person who they were trying to catch they found out that it was a drow priestess of loth <laughs> not someone they were able to mess with so uh they took her down and bound her and uh then more drow showed up with uh crossbow darts sleeping darts and tried taking them out but in the end it was wiser for them to flee instead of invoking the city watch who was making patrols in the area so uh they went to grab the drow priestess and then teleported out of there um, there was one person who was left behind for them to uh, interrogate, and that is a human woman who might have been a, conspire, a conspirator. Um, and it was also revealed that uh, the nobleman who is there uh, is some type of uh, snake person, a Yuan Ti. So I might be pronouncing that wrong. I haven't actually looked up the pronunciation of that. Yuan Ti? I like to say Yuan because it has it, you, and it sounds more mysterious. Anyway, so that's where we are currently in the campaign, and they, uh, the uh, the the Yuan Ti, the Yuan Ti, uh, slithered off the deck into the water and then disappeared in the murky depths beneath, and they were like, mm, "Nope, I'm not going to go jump in dark water after." Someone who turned into a giant snake. Uh, it's funny, the, the tiefling rogue, she has a phobia of snakes. So she was like, nope, and <laughs> started turning around as soon as I uh, turned into a snake. Anyway, so that's all. That's where we are. So there, they have, they, there's a boat there. There is the dock. Um, they have a prisoner. I, I can go many different ways. Mostly when I when I try to start, I like to recap what's going on. Uh, but I like to have an idea of what 
what they're going to be going into so that I can try and steer it. Uh, really, I like to have the players tell the story. So I have key players. I have bad guys, apparently, you could tell. And uh, they have their plans that they're trying to come to fruition. And now they are aware of this small force of adventurers, whereas beforehand they had been uh, un unhindered in their plans. Uh, so they might look for some type of retaliation. Uh, there might be some type of... Uh, an engagement where they're trying to take out the prisoner before she can give too much information. Uh, at this point, I didn't even know. I mean, you never know how combat's going to go with adventurers. They might take everybody out. They might flee. They might, <laughs> anything can happen based on the dice rules. So uh, with that in mind, we have, I have all of the uh, terrain that I, um, so me and my brothers, we've been sending back and forth the different prototypes and, uh, trying to work on just perfecting everything that we have. Obviously, the trees that I have with me are not the final product. Uh, we have increased the base size, and we have edited the, uh, or I say we, it's the royal we. Really, my older brother, Caleb, who's a genius, uh, he was the one who has been uh, designing everything, and then my brain has just been coming up with the ideas. So... <laughs> We're dynamic duo where uh, I have only ideas and uh, I have some talent, but uh, the majority of my talent lies in my imagination. So without uh, Caleb, who uh, is our terrain engineer and also is a professor at uh, UC Northridge, <laughs> he's very esteemed. Uh, I'm sure he would be rolling his eyes if he was hearing me right now. So um, he creates the terrain and uh, so we've been sending it back and forth. On that note, I have what I have, and uh, I would like to, to make an encounter with all of you with that in mind. So a uh, very long-winded uh, beginning, but very important for you to understand where we're coming from as far as the, uh, the adventure would go. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera view down. Actually, uh, can... <laughs> Can somebody say something so I know you can actually hear me and I'm not just a silent person blabbing my mouth without anything? Can you hear me? I should have done this in the beginning. Oh, noob, rookie mistake, Blade. Rookie mistake. Hello, John. Hello, and everybody else. So good to have you here. Um, yeah, so um, can you hear me? That is my that is my first question. That that should be addressed before I keep going. <laughs> Selfies are enabled. Well, this is fancy. Let's see if I pull up Kickstarter.com. Oh no, I don't want to do that. Ugh, not that one. Ugh. This ship can sink. Do, do. Okay. There, stay tuned. Starting and oh yeah, I can hear me. Okay, cool. All right. Uh that <laughs> it did a little and that was you know the through the reverb, the feedback, obviously, because I have a that microphone that's that's going. Anyways, anyways, okay, so uh Let's build an encounter together. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Uh, I know that all of you are amazing creators, storytellers, dungeon masters, very talented at what you do. And while I only have about a decade of experience of being a dungeon master, I have uh, all of my years of experience being a role player because at one point or another, I have played a role in my life. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, so I will go ahead and switch this camera angle down, right, Mier. And I'm going to turn this lighting down so the camera will stop trying to auto adjust. Hold on. Come on. You could do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I have the terrain. I've got my event, my adventurers here. If I turn this off, can you still see? Yeah, but it's not as fancy. Okay, so turn that on. Let's turn this up. 
Let's move this back. Oh, why are you trying to do that? Okay, weird. All right. <clears throat> Oh, I just want you to be able to like see the terrain, but it's trying to auto adjust. As R.A. Salvatore would say, that bothers me more than a little. Okay. Man, I had such great ideas for this camera to look good. And then it went all like potato quality on me. All right, we're going with potato quality. Side eye. Okay, uh, all right. So <laughs> uh, everybody knows what it's like to watch something from uh, the perspective of, of a potato. So that's why I'm referencing that. Okay, here we go. I got that. I've got that. All right. So I've got the bases. Okay. So this is where the majority of my crafting begins. Obviously, I have boat. I've got one water tile. We're working uh, on our water tiles. They look awesome. Obviously, there are stretch goals. So if we don't make our stretch goal, that's okay. That's a future project that we're going to be working on. And uh, something that we have done is balance this out so that when you flip it over, it's not un at an uneven angle. It's actually, it rests perfectly level. It's really cool. Anyways, my brother's really cool, guys. Uh, all right, so I have my three-masted chip. If I wanted, I could take these out. Um, and then what's nice is the top of them have this little insert on them so in the future we can like put flags or something on there because the crow's nest itself comes out there and then if you want you just stick it in there or if you guys are creative i mean obviously <laughs> i'm not going to stop you if you have your own 3d printer to create your own thing all you need is that little insert and then you can put it in there so i mean keep on creating that's why we that's why we love this community anyways so Pop that in there, spin that around. Okay, so three-masted ship, I can make this just a little dinghy. I could take the mast out of the main one. We could just have it be a barge. <laughs> what do y'all think? What, as, as we say in Texas, what do, what do you guys think we should do? We have a drow, I mean, is that too cliche? Uh, why do I have to be so uh, just assuming that the drow are like that? Anyways, so <laughs> we have the boat that we can use. We have the floor tiles. Obviously, these are our standard piece. We've got their double-sided. So we've got wooden planks. We've got stone floors. If I wanted, I can make a dock that goes up to it. I'm looking pretty nice there. Oh. Magnetic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love that. Okay, so, um, all right. So, if I have this dock go up to the boat, then where they were, at the end of last evening, we had the boat. It was docked like that. I had the dock coming out of it. And then I put two more squares like that. And then there was another square like that. That was basically our fight scene. Um, what I love about the walls, like... <laughs> They're so easy to deploy. If I wanted to put a perimeter around this, it's just boom. And it's not meant to be perfect. It's meant to be fast so that when you're doing this on the fly, it can just get, it just Autobots roll out just like immediately. If I wanted to build something like this for me, when I, when I use my dungeon, uh, my Dwarven Forge stuff uh, or other, or other things. Um, obviously my like pre-made Hearst Arts molds, uh, they all have uh, their, their own thing. So I just drop it on the table. It's a, it's a self-contained thing except for Dwarven Forge where I have to take the walls and then kind of put them all together and arrange them. This it's just, you, you just very quickly set it up and deploy it. Uh, it's super fast. And it's something that I can do in the moment when I'm not prepared for the 
adventurers to actually chase the bad guys who are way higher levels than them. <laughs> I try to give them plenty of warning so that they don't feel like I'm just TPKing them. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So um, that was the encounter last a week. We had this all here. So I can continue from here. Um, I, I'm not sure if they, they had mentioned that they might want to commandeer the vessel, but I think that them having the prisoner, uh, I don't know, maybe that would make them want to take the, the vessel out to sea even more because the wizard has sailing experience. <laughs> of course he does. Uh, fun fact about our wizard. I'll just throw this up here real quick. Our wizard, Evender. Um, his backstory is that he was a super preppy wizard who went to the wizarding college in Waterdeep. And based on his grades, he got a full ride scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> so that maybe there's too much realism. Maybe there's too much of a modern society in uh, my world of Forgotten Realms. But I, I think it's funny because it has... Uh, real world things that happen that are done in a fantasy adventure setting that um, kind of poke fun at uh, the, the 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 weird things that we have with our society today, like meeting a government employee who's basically a DMV employee, the Department of Motor Vehicles, for those who are may, might not know what that acronym is, uh, who have no interest in doing their job. And they, and, and I'm sorry, I apologize. If any of you are Department of Motor Vehicles employees, uh, this has just been my personal experience going to the DMV every time. Uh, I feel like I'm not welcome and that I'm interrupting something. <laughs> <laughs> I this is the only place I can do this. I have nowhere else to go. <laughs> Anyways, all right, so I'm off on a tangent. So here we go, going back down. Uh, so a vendor is a rich, a richy rich who knows how to sail because he was part of the yacht club at the Wizarding College. Uh, anyway, so it's super easy for me to deploy a, a water scene if I wanted to do a like an airship. Like I didn't, I, they haven't really explored the town very much because they showed up in the evening. So if we have an airship, then they could run into that. That could be something that we could work with. This is not as easy to set up for, I mean, like as fast <laughs> for my airships, just because of the wooden ballasts or rather the stilts that we have it resting on. But again, same size. And then it's super nice too, because if you buy them, then you got instant, like how many characters, how many players do you have that are always flying? And you're like, I have nothing to indicate that you're flying. So we could repurpose those anyways. Um, so I like that this could be either a water encounter or it could be an airship if I wanted to. And just like, oh, they're flying because they're on stilts. Oh, wait, this one only has three. That's right. Way to go, Benj. Way to remember things. All right, so we got our airship. Look at all its majesty. Looking pretty good right there. Flying above the water. Little, little man just on the dock. Actually, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Folks... This is why you play with everything, so that you know what you can do. This has a, a, a realistic kind of environment because the boat would be like a large sailing vessel would be out of the water. Ah, oh, folks, what have I done? I have just discovered something amazing. Okay, so here is my philosophy on stairs. These are super easy to build up so that you have a platform that is going up to the boat. And then you could have put one under here for support, you know? <laughs> so if I did this, then that would be that kind of a stone platform. 
obviously this might look silly, but it's really cool. So, I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, so he's out there. So he goes, he walks all the way up and that's, uh, <laughs> the, that's the power of love. No, that is, uh, how we can make these terrain into actual stairs leading up. I don't know why I didn't just have like, okay, so I had the dock level with the top of the ship. That's not really realistic. If you have ever been to a port, obviously you have to have the gangway leading up to it. And uh, you know what? That could be something I throw at Caleb later. Hey, I need a gangway. I've got an awesome ship. I've got the masts. I've got people I can put in the crow's nest. If I want, there's Gandalf at the very top. I can have people fighting on all of the fronts. And they just sit there. They're just like folks. Blink, blink, blink. That's amazing. And that like blows my mind that we can do that. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> uh, maybe I will. Maybe I will fashion the gangway like this. If they go up onto the deck, I can have them go in the deck. And then with my remaining piece, or I could take one of the side pieces because we don't need that side. Heck, we don't even need that side. We can just do this. Boom. With the remaining piece, I could have an indoor encounter where we have the now, uh, hold on, where's extra space? I'll, I'll move the camera, I'll leave that set up, and then I'll have this be the new viewing area. Oh dear, okay, cool. <laughs> so, the ship is roughly three squares long. Wait, hold on, the wood planks will go this way. So this is a cool thing that we have with the wooden planks. You can almost tell that there's the four by four inch because you have the lines in the wood, but we, well, Caleb, uh, separated the wood. So it still looks like it's an uneven pattern, but you can still tell one inch by one inch squares on the way that he did it. Because he's a boss, people. Like, I, I, can't, I can't stress enough how cool he is. My older brother, he's just the coolest cool that ever cooled my remaining pieces. Oh, that's right. The front of the boat comes to a little, little point there. <laughs> um, okay, so the back of the boat would be roughly like uh, that. And we'll put these last four together. Boom. So now I have an indoor boat that when they go under the deck, they can interrogate their prisoner, who is a female woman. And let's say for all intents and purposes, it is this female woman, uh, because I don't want them to turn into murder hobos. I want them to feel, you know, humans, like, man, where is it? Where will it actually focus? Because there's some good detail. There's some good detail on that. Anyway, so uh, they could have her tied up, etc. Be surrounding her, and then I can drop some baddies in. And I could say these are stairs right there. Those are the stairs up, everybody. Man, that's actually really intimidating. So Alona, the gnome cleric, is a female. Riven, the tiefling rogue, is a female. We have another drow rogue. We have a drow wizard. And a human, well, he's not a wizard, he's a warlock. <laughs> he, he made some deals. Uh, so I think I kind of like that. This, of course, wouldn't be the encounter unless I had the drow show up to attack and to try and not, not kill everybody because they don't have the numbers, but to kill her, that would be the, that would be it. They do have a cleric though. Hmm. Clerics of Kelimvor, peeps, they are pretty important. I don't know if you know this about clerics of Kelimvor, but they are, they are obsessed with enumerating the dead. So she tries to uh, kill as many bad guys as possible so that she can put them all into her, her books. 
<laughs> Anyways, so um, I think that that is where I'll go with this. And let me know, obviously, if you have any uh, recommendations for me. I, I think I kind of like where that will lead. I think that's going to be an interesting encounter where they have the top of the deck where if they leave the floor area, I already have that able to be set up. And um, obviously this can be done in the moment, except for the boat being on the, uh, the stilts that will take me a little bit, but that's something I could do when I first get there. And they kind of like the ship just being there anyway. So they'll be like, Oh, cool. A little decoration remind us of what happened last week. No, we will have an encounter here. Uh, if we don't have an encounter there, that's fine. I can repurpose this idea, this concept later and just have it documented so that I can build it out as I go in the future. Um, I think that's kind of the beauty of being a dungeon master. You can have ideas for dungeons and have it in your arsenal so that when the players stumble upon something similar in the sandbox that they're playing in, uh, they can they can meet that later. I have... <sighs> oh, let me go grab my notes. <laughs> okay. Boom. This is where all the magic happens. It's in my black binder. It's pretty cool. I'm a pretty important guy, so I have a black binder. All I'm missing is a clipboard. That's it. I mean, obviously, this is where I started on the, the old double-sided dry erase marker. What is that? Oh, yeah, that was a... They call it a mine. A mine! Yeah, that was where they were before then. I have my master screen. I've got my secret, secret notes. And then I have the the maps that, you know, Watsi produces with their adventures, and they're super cool, super detailed. Uh, but then I have homemade stuff. Like, <laughs> I didn't need to make this, but I did, because at a time I wanted to have a forest, like, you're coming upon the campsite of a group of orcs or goblins or something. So I drew it out. I didn't need to do that. I made this and this is, that's my arena. Now I don't need to do that anymore because I have, also, well, the arena, hmm, I might have to, I might have to talk to my brothers, make an arena, get some like, auditorium, amphitheater style going up. I really like that idea. The only the only issue that we run into with doing things like that is that our, we want uh, everyone at the table to be able to see what's going on. I saw someone set up today. I need to spend not, too, not as much time on the internet as I spend every day, but I do. Uh, hashtag no regrets. And the... Uh, <laughs> The guy's setup was an entire city. Maybe not an entire city, but a section of a city large enough for me to think as a dungeon master, I really hope that they stop in that city. <laughs> because sometimes they just don't. <laughs> they just don't want to. <laughs> and again, it kind of it's hard to like unveil that, but I think at the table you get that awesome epic feeling when you see something like that and everyone shows up to like something's happening tonight. That's amazing. Like I would just want to go from door to door and that's my problem. As a player, I would want to explore everything and the dungeon master might not have notes for everything. He might not know who the house of the place next to where the adventure is going on is. I don't care. I just want to knock on the door. Uh, yes, I would like to, um, have you heard of our Lord and savior Cthulhu? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I imagine in that scenario, the Cthulhu is my warlock patron and I am a, a warlock of goo. Uh, anyway, so I think that that's a good encounter that I'm going to go with next week. I have gone off track too many times and I'm trying to reel it back in. But uh, yeah, so versatility, utility, reusability, and uh, creativity. Those are all things 
uh, that uh, we were able to see just with what we had tonight. And that's just me. The, that's the ramblings of a madman. Imagine all of you amazing sane people, what you can create with this. Uh, because I'm pretty sure somewhere I have uh, begun to be in, just infected with Siric the Mad. And I have a little bit of that madness. I do. And um, I embrace it. It's a part of who I am. The first step to recovery is admitting that I have a problem that I'm powerless to overcome. <laughs> uh, anyways, people. Uh, so I. Uh, so again, thank you all for for your your pledges, for your kind words, for your support, for your recommendations. We and even just your consideration and time. Like for those of you who have just stopped by to check it out, like that's a that's to me that's a huge honor. It's it's humbling for for me to know that what we have created people could be interested in. Um, and I think that's really the whole point of trying to collaborate like this, try to create and design. I think that that is kind of the joy that kind of comes from it. And I, I appreciate it. And I know that my brothers appreciate it. So I would like to express on their behalf also their gratitude for everything that uh, you have done to help us try to make our dreams come to fruition and to uh, be able to provide our designs to everyone. Um, so if you do have anybody who uh, hasn't heard of the project that you think might be interested, please share it with them. Share it on uh, social media. Or if you're in any uh, terrain forums where you talk about, hey guys, do you know if there's anybody who has awesome boats or uh, trees that you can hide in or double-sided terrain? <laughs> yes, I do. Here's the link. That is, uh, that's all it takes. And I know that you all have that conversation every day with everyone that you meet. So, um, so that's why I bring it up. Uh, otherwise, it would be weird. <laughs> all right. Um, well, uh, thank you all. I mean, obviously, uh, this has been a lot of fun for me. I hope it was fun to watch. Um, and if you uh, do have any recommendations in the future, please send us messages. Please comment. Please. Uh, let us know, and we will have those so that we can bring them to fruition. Because really, <laughs> all of this was in my head until my brother uh, was able to create it, and until I am able to take uh, the proper training from him or from, uh, I don't know, somewhere. I'm very interested in learning at least the tricks of the trade so I can get a basic sculpt down. And then my brother can take it and say, this is terrible. I'm going to just edit a little. And then it turns out to be something completely different, but uh, he'll never tell me. So as long as uh, he never tells me, my, my pride won't be wounded. Um, but uh, that's what we're working on. We want to keep growing organically. We want to uh, start on the right foot so that we don't quickly become overwhelmed. And I don't know, we, we've, we know enough about uh, running our own businesses to know that we have limitations on what we are humanly capable of accomplishing. So we're trying to keep this on a manageable level until we can reach those unmanageable levels and uh, collaborate with other artistic professionals such as yourselves. So thank you again. And uh, we hope that all of you are uh, having just the best times ever. I play on uh, Thursday this week. So I'm going to try and find a way to live stream without uh, the use of the uh, Wi-Fi at the store that we are gaming at. So, so wish me luck. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. Uh, thank you again. Have a great evening. And uh, please, yes, feel free to communicate with us if there is anything that you feel you would like to see or uh, have in the future. So um, have a great evening and uh, let's get gaming. Hold on, gaming is life, that's it. <laughs> let's get gaming. I was thinking of the School of Rock where he's like, let's get rocking. Uh, but no, uh, the tagline that I prefer to go with is that uh, remember gaming 